What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Let's Get It Gaming Daily News with your boy Joe. Joe, we have five stories on today's agenda for Thursday, May 9th, 2024, all of which I find quite intriguing. So let's jump in to story number one. This comes from GameSpot's Eddie Makuch. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League disappointing release led to a $200 million shortfall for Warner Bros. Warner Bros. Discovery has once again commented on the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's financial performance, which came in below expectation. CEO David Zaslav David Zaslav said during a briefing as reported by VGC that the poor performance of Kill the Justice Leagues brought down the company's entire studio division, which encompassed not just games, but also the film and TV division. Zaslav said Kill the Justice League had a disappointing release going on to note that the latest quarter was always going to be a tough one due to companies due to compromise. Oh, due to comparisons to last year, that's because Hogwarts Legacy was released in February 2023 and went on to put up massive sales numbers. In fact, Hogwarts Legacy was the best-selling game overall in the U.S. for the entirety of 2023, beating out even the Call of Duty's MW3. Warner Bros. Discovery CFO Gunnar Weldenfields, God, these last names are mother driver put things into perspective, further saying the difference in financial performance between Hogwarts Legacy and Kill the Justice League led to a $200 million impact to the company's bottom line during the quarter. Back in February, during the previous earnings call, Widenfells alluded to tough times to come, saying, to come, saying the poor performance of Kill the Justice League would be setting our game's business up for a tough year-over-year year comp comp comp. Expectations were high for Kill the Justice League, which was made by Rock City Games, but the game didn't resonate, and at least on PC, player figures have dropped dramatically. That's unfortunate. Um, I really actually, I was looking forward to Kill the Justice League, honestly. I, I was going to try it, and then all the reviews came through, and like I didn't really like the... I'm not big on like the. I didn't like the gameplay game gameplay mechanics. It kind of just I don't know. It 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 veered me off from it, which is unfortunate. Maybe if it comes on Game Pass or it gets free on PS uh, Plus or something, I will jump into it. But for now, we're gonna leave that one on the back burner. Let's jump into story number two. This comes from IGN's Michael Cripp. Poppy Playtime is the latest horror video game to get the get the movie treatment. Game developer Mob Entertainment is partnering with Legendary Entertainment to create a movie based on its toy factory horror hit Poppy Playtime. Legendary is developing the video game to movie adaptation with producers Don Murphy and Susan Montford from Angry Films. Details on its plot and cast have yet to be revealed. No release date has been confirmed. Poppy Playtime centers around Playtime Co., a once great toy manufacturer that fell from grace after everything, everyone inside its factory disappeared. Players take control of a former employee who finds themselves sucked back to the factory long after the disappearance, and it doesn't take long for them to discover that the toys the toys seem to be more playful and this time around. Poppy Billy Time was released in free to play, first chapter in twenty twenty one, with two more chapters adding to the story in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty four. Mob says that its horror puzzle gameplay lore and Twist have managed to draw in more than 40 million players across PC, mobile, ne- mobile Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation devices, as well as the Roblox. As well as on Roblox, it's become so popular that some characters like Huggy Wuggy and the Smiling Critters have popped up across retailers in the form of collectible figures, plush toys, and costumes. Um, that's pretty cool. I did play. Uh, Poppy's Playtime on the channel a while back. I did enjoy it. I didn't go back to it. I probably should, but it's up there. It's not great. The quality is rough, um, but it's cool to see this get a movie. I And honestly, I I am surprised that I'm even saying that because if you had told me four four years ago that uh, someone was adapt ad- adapting, that don't seem like the right word. Mm, anyways, that someone was 
adapting. That's not right. I don't know why that sounds wrong to me. Whatever. My point being, if I found knew that they were going to make a video game into a movie or TV show, I would have been like, nah, dude, it don't work. Don't do it. It's not a good idea. I wouldn't have looked forward to this at all. But after The Last of Us, after Fallout, after even Halo, uh, I have a lot of faith that this will be cool and impressive and spooky, and I'm actually looking forward to it. So if you want to know more about that, you'll have to come back at a later date once they release more information for us. With that being said, let's jump into story number three. I think this is one of the bigger ones. This comes from IGN's Wesley Yin Pool. Pool? Pool. Xbox execs reportedly told staff we need smaller games that give us prestige and awards a day after shutting down Hi-Fi Rush Dev Tango Gameworks. The boss of Xbox Game Studios reportedly told Bethesda staff we need a small need Smaller games that give us prestige and awards just a day after shutting down Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks. The Verge reported on the remarks after it emerged the, that Tango Gameworks was in the process of pitching a Hi-Fi Rush sequel and wanted to hire additional staff before its sudden closure. Similarly, Arcane Austin had hoped to make another immersive sim in the dishonored vein that would have required staffing up before it was shut down. The report, which sheds additional light on the shock closure of Tango Gameworks and Redfall developer Arcane Austin, claimed Xbox leadership felt that the overall studio system was spread too thin, and Xbox Game Studios chief Matt Booty reportedly linking it to peanut butter on bread. Yeah, I talked about that yesterday. Xbox leadership held a ta town hall meeting with Zenimax staff on Wednesday, May 8th, and during its attempted to answer key questions around the decision to close a number of Bethesda studios, one person who was in attendance, told IGN Microsoft has declined to comment. IGN understands that Booty told staff the closure of Arcane Austin was not about the failure of last year's dis disastrous Redfall, rather about the future prospects of the studio. Bloomberg's Jason Shire reported that ZeniMax was under pressure to t make significant cuts and chose Tango Gameworks and Arcane Austin because they were in the process of pitching projects that would have required increased investment rather than studios already working on greenlit games one person in attendance at the meeting told IGN that the suggestion suggestion was that because these studios were currently pitching new games they had the weakest legs to stand on which it came to picking who to cut um that's unfortunate as I've already said before I went over this the other day it sucks when they get these studios get shut down and as I also said um that that's what happens when they keep buying up smaller studios unfortunately it or i guess i said bethesda is not a small studio but essentially putting all these studios under one head can generally lead to um like closures because they just financially they can't support it it's too much going on that it's disorganized it, it should the quality and and i think the quality can lose its value so that's unfortunate. Hopefully, we get something close to Hi-Fi Rush, but there is some good Hi-Fi Rush news for all of you Hi-Fi Rush lovers. Um, this comes from IGN's Taylor Lyles. Limited Run says Hi-Fi Physical Hi-Fi Rush Physical Edition is still a go after Tango GameWorks closure. After Microsoft unexpectedly announced its closure of Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango GameWorks, some wondered whether the previous announced physical version of the game would ever see the light of day. But don't worry, despite the Tango Gameworks closure, Limited Run Games is still planning to release a physical edition of the studio's final project. Limited Run Games' official X account replied to one comment that suggested that the company would not move forward with a physical release of Hi-Fi Rush due to Tango Gameworks closure. Limited Run responded that this was not the case and that the physical release is a go, but no further information such as a release date was discussed. So... Unfortunately, this isn't like new Hi-Fi Rush news, but it is cool that if you wanted the physical version, you are going to get one. It is still in the works, so there still will hopefully be a little bump in some Hi-Fi Rush um, influence in the world. So that's cool. We'd love to see it. And I seriously think I'm going to check out Hi-Fi Rush on the channel. I, I just it, I feel like it has to be done at this point. All these news stories, I think I need to do it. All right, let's jump into our fifth and final story. This is not really that big of a news story, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, this comes from IGN's Michael Cripe. The Fantastic Four is bringing John Malkovich into the MCU. The Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU already star studded the Fantastic Four movie and adding another big name to its cast, John Malkovich. 
That's according to The Hollywood Reporter, which says that the experienced actor has joined the film ahead of its release next year. Details on how he will fit into the superhero movie are being kept under wraps for now. Malkovich has appeared in prominent movies, roles since the 80s, and made a name for himself with projects like Of Mice and Men in 1992 and Being John Malkovich in 1999. More recently, the star was featured in Space Force, Bird Box, Burn After Reading, The Deep Water Horizon. The actor almost saw his Marvel debut with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4, but the film was eventually shelved. Fantastic Four has been one of the most hotly Highly anticipated MCU film since the Marvel Studios announced it back in 2020. The supergroup, which has appeared in other live-action incarnations in the past, has never gotten their own standalone MCU entry, so Marvel has assembled a stellar crew to help introduce them. The main cast and heroes include Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, Iban Mosbarachi as Ben Grimm, The Thing, and Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm. We also learned that Ozark star Julia Garner will appear as Silver Surfer, with Paul Walker Hauser also attached to in a mysterious role, and with Malkovich now on board too, it's looking like Fantastic Four is primed to deliver a stacked list of names. This includes the fact that the movie is directed by WandaVision and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, alum Matt Shack Shack Shakeman. Um, that's awesome. Like I said, I thought it was just cool to throw this in there because I'm looking forward to the Fantastic Four MCU version. One of the few MCU that I've been looking forward to. Um, and it's cool to see John Malkovich go and join the team. Uh, I love him as an actor, and it's going to be fun. So we get to look forward to that. But that is going to do it for today's daily daily news update. Thank you all for watching. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like, give me that comment, hit that subscribe, and hit that little notification to know when the next video goes up. I hope the quality is improving. I hope my speech is becoming more clear. That practice makes perfect, and one day I will get there. But until that day, we will all have to struggle through this together. Remember, I love you, I appreciate you, and I respect you. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace! And keep on gaming.